All right, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, I do mean over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, the ongoing collapse of global industrial civilization on this gorgeous, it is a Thursday morning, it is 420, it is April 20th, 2023, and I need to get out of here and head to the great state of North Carolina today and uh, so before I get on the road with my little dog just need to do I don't know is this an amplification and clarification so oh yes before I start I do have some news I don't know why anybody cares uh, I, I guess this uh, loudmouth jackass on that other channel that some of you might listen to. It looks like he has been thrown into YouTube jail for fat shaming. Yes, uh, that uh, fat shaming loudmouth uh, is in jail talking trash about fat people. Cannot be talking trash about fat people. Can't do it on YouTube. Anyway, <clears throat> So, uh, speaking of having videos ripped down, uh, I did something yesterday I don't think I have ever done one time in Collapse Chronicles history, and that is I pulled down a video after several of you wrote to me saying, I am the clueless moron that I don't know how to read. Uh, and this was talking about this article that uh, several of you sent me from resilience.org by this uh, doomer collapsitarian you've probably heard of named Jim Bendel. Jim Bendel came out of nowhere several years ago and wrote this excellent kind of manifesto about why the collapse of global industrial civilization was inevitable. Inevitable. Let's look at the definition of the word inevitable from vocabulary.com. Inevitable. If something is inevitable, it will definitely happen. If something is inevitable, it will definitely happen. So anyway, Jim Bendel wrote uh, this, this uh, which I covered here, and most of the Doomers did, covered this uh, story uh, talking about how collapse is inevitable. It is going to happen. There's no stopping it. Uh, and so now, here we are in 2023, and having Resilience.org in the headline, which was probably uh, written by a no doubt confused editor. Uh, you know, the writer does not write the, usually does not write the headline. So I'm assuming an editor at resilience.org titled the story by Jim Bendel, I was wrong to conclude collapse is inevitable. So I read that, and, and I guess other people who read that if someone says to you, I was wrong to conclude collapse is inevitable, that sounds to me like another way of saying that I no longer believe that collapse is inevitable and that it can be averted. Uh, and it doesn't help when, okay, so a little journalism lesson. So the, the editor writes the headline. But the writer, at least the first time out, the f generally speaking, the first sentence in <clears throat> a piece of journalism is called the lead. 
the lead, the very first sentence. And this is, I think, as far as the editor. So this is Jim Bendel's very first sentence. I was wrong to conclude collapse is inevitable, which is just repeating the headline, because when I was concluding that, it had already begun. I, 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 I just have to say, guys, I, I was a, uh, an, an editor for several years uh, back in my former life as a journalist, if, if one of my reporters, uh, writers, had uh, turned in that sentence, <clears throat> I would, uh, or if I had been a journalism professor and some, uh, you know, 18-year-old freshman journalism student had turned in that horribly written, completely confusing sentence to me, I would have put a big red line through it, returned it to him, and said, try again. The sentence doesn't make any sense. So, I, I, I'm trying to diagram what in the hell is going through Jim Bendel's head. Is he saying that collapse is inevitable, or is he saying it's not inevitable because when he wrote that it was inevitable, it had already begun? You know, I, I'm trying to picture what does this mean? Uh, so let's say, you know, your house is at the bottom of a mountain. And, you're li and on top of the hill above your house are these two giant boulders. Okay, there's two giant boulders sitting there, and you're thinking, I really hope neither one of those, neither one of those boulders ever dislodges and rolls down the hill and destroys my house. So you're out in your yard one day, and you look up at the two boulders looming over your house, and suddenly, out of nowhere, the boulder on the right somehow gets dislodged, starts rolling down the mountain. Uh, the, the process of uh, the boulder rolling ending in the collapse of your house has begun. It is an active process that has begun. Do you can which is more inevitable? The boulder on the left sitting there, not moving, destroying your house, or the rolling boulder coming towards you? Which one is more inevitable? Uh, does the is it more inevitable that the boulder that is not rolling towards your house, is that more inevitable that it's going to destroy your house than the boulder that is rolling towards your house is going to uh, destroy? I would say, this is just me, I, th this is just me, I would think that the boulder rolling towards my house it's more inevitable that my house is going to be destroyed by the boulder, by the boulder that's already moving. Uh, so anyway, I guess you could say the conclusion that my house is going to be destroyed by the boulder that is rolling towards the house is not, the conclusion is not inevitable. I mean, the boulder could stop short of the house or it could roll to the right or left. You know what I'm saying. Uh, but, but, but anyway, I have no idea what Jim, Jim Bendel's definition of inevitable is. Uh, and obviously, the, uh, the editor reading this uh, word salad uh, that Jim, this gobbledygook, that Jim Bendel wrote here, that obviously I and other people 
misinterpreted to believe that Jim Bendell no longer believes collapse is inevitable. Uh, just, uh, it, it's, well, uh, <clears throat> I, I, I just don't know what to do with this uh, as a reader or uh, I just wish to hell I had been an editor at resilience.org and, and I would have sent this back uh, for, for rewriting. So uh, I don't know. So is, is, I, I guess I won't uh, automatically call Jim Bendell a, uh, a clueless moron like I did yesterday, but I will call him a horrible writer who does not, uh, whose writing skills would get him an F in Sam Mitchell's Journalism 101 class. And uh, so I, I've read this story now very carefully, three times I have read this uh, essay in Resilience, and I'm still not 100% sure what this horrible writer Jim Bendell is saying. I'm gonna, I'm, I mean, I'll put the link on here like I did yesterday. So you decide, guys, is Jim Bendell still a doomer, or has he smoked a bowl of hopium? After reading this story three times, I still don't know. Take it away, Jim Bendell. I was wrong to conclude collapse is inevitable because when I was concluding that, it had already begun. Hmm. When I concluded that societal collapse is inevitable nearly five years ago, it may have been one of the reasons my deep at adaptation paper attracted unusual attention, many people agreed and thanked me for expressing that conclusion publicly. They said it helped validate what they had already felt and so enabled their emotional processing and to change their lives accordingly. Other people chose a variety of ways to disagree. Some claimed I was not being scientific to claim an inevitable outcome and instead language like near certain or very likely would be more appropriate. Others preferred to regard societal collapse as a possibility as they wanted to huh, as they wanted to hit, as they as they wanted to hit, as they wanted to ha, 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 hope for a managed transition to a new form of society. Unfortunately, other people misrepresented what I wrote. So uh, I, I love it. So I guess what Jim Bendell is trying to do in this piece is talk about how people misrepresented what he wrote by writing a, a, a new essay that is such gobbledygook that nobody has any idea what the hell he's saying. That, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, uh, uh, oh boy, uh, the, the irony of, uh, trying to clear up some misconceptions about a piece of writing by uh, writing a piece of writing that will be completely misconceived by half of its readers because nobody knows what the hell he's talking about. To recap, in that paper, you know, from 2018, I did not claim that we faced inevitable near-term human extinction, and I did not claim that the inevitable collapse would happen by 2028. Instead, in that paper in 2018, which he has a link to, you can read the entire thing, I wrote, 
recent research suggests that human societies will experience disruptions to their basic functioning within less than 10 years due to climate stress. Such disruptions include increased levels of malnutrition, starvation, disease, civil conflict, and war, and will not avoid affluent nations, close quote. Uh, I never thought, uh, I, I never thought, never accused Jim Bendel of being one of these clueless morons in any way, shape, or form predicting near-term human extinction uh, by the year 2028 or 2030 or 2026. Anybody who believes that humans are going to be extinct on this planet is every bit as uh, a, a, a clueless moron as Elon Musk or Tucker Carlson. Anybody believing that humans are going to be extinct by 2030. Uh, as much as I wish they would be, uh, you are a clueless moron. Uh, and I did not... Uh, uh, so anyway, I guess I did not misread his original paper. So now in 2023, many experts and UN officials are saying similar. <clears throat> I summarized my position thus, thus. This is the summary of his position five years ago. I'm guessing uh, he's talking still about 2018. Currently, I'm thinking he's talking 2018, although it's unclear. Currently, I have chosen to interpret the information as indicating inevitable collapse, probable catastrophe, and possible extinction. I then, you know, back in 2018, warned against the trap of concluding inevitable human extinction, quoting 2018, I have witnessed how people who doubt extinction is either inevitable or coming soon are disparaged by some participants for being weak and deluded. This could reflect how some of us may find it easier to believe in a certain than an uncertain story especially when the uncertain future would be so different to today that it is difficult to comprehend, close quote. Uh, it would take a while to unpack that sentence. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the misrepresentations of the original deep adaptation paper, and I think he's talking mostly to any clueless moron uh, believing that humans are going to be extinct uh, in the next 10 years. Um, the misrepresentations of the original deep, deep adaptation paper within mainstream publications and by participants in environmental professions and movements has distorted understanding even for people who welcome the analysis and concept in the first instance, such misrepresentation <clears throat> has been helpful for those people who wanted to sideline a discussion of collapse or perhaps to own the agenda for themselves. It is an open question how much crucial time and public money has been lost due to people pursuing such tactics. Uh, guys, uh, I, I, I don't know, maybe Jim Bendel was just uh, 
trying to write this at 4 o'clock in the morning. The guy is completely losing me. Okay? He is getting deeper and deeper into completely losing me. What the hell are you talking about, Jim Bendel? The valid criticisms were, the valid criticisms were, that I had not sufficiently defined either collapse or what would be collapsing. I was new to the topic of societal collapse at that time, so when in early 2021, 20, I embarked on a couple of years of research on the topic with an interdisciplinary team, I was open to finding analysis that would nuance my conclusions. The result of that process is contained in my new book, Breaking Together. What I discovered is that the breakdown of societies had already begun when I was researching the deep, at, deep adaptation paper in 2017 and 18. Collapse is a process, not an event. And because the changes already observed appear to be inevitable, Collapse is a reasonable term to describe that process. Okay, let's read the first sentence. I was wrong to conclude collapse is inevitable because when I was concluding that, it had already begun, and he has now clarified that word salad with the word salad Collapse is a process, not an event, and because the changes already observed appear to be oh, irreversible. That maybe that's my problem. I'm reading. Uh, I I need better glasses because the changes already observed appear to be irreversible. Collapse is a reasonable term to describe that process. In the book, I go into great depth on the evidence base for this perspective. I also explain why it is not one that we hear so often from experts. Uh, in chapter one, I describe some of the socio-economic evidence and theory for the view that the collapse of industrial consumer societies has already begun. Uh, chapter 4 on global food systems breakdown is also available in this paper that he links you to. Um, then he uh, runs a comment uh, from that paper from Dr. Kaja Hujo from the UN Research Institute for Social Development, uh, quoting that Jim Bendel's paper and forthcoming book is a wake-up call that our global food systems are approaching global breakdown due to a number of interlinked hard trends from biophysical limits of food production and climate change to growing demand and the destruction and the destructive implications of our profit-oriented capitalist system. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyway, uh, back to Jim. Um, the research process was not fun for any of us involved due to the fact that we were analyzing so many interconnecting problems and discovering the limitations 
of so many proposed solutions. Okay, now here we go again. Is this hopium or not? I mean, I haven't read the book. It's not out till May 9th. However, the second half of the book offers a positive way of making sense out of this situation, which may or may not be inevitable. It's irreversible, but it maybe it's not inevitable. Anyway, a positive way of making sense out of this situation and celebrates the people who are responding creatively and courageously. I am her. Huh. I, I am, I am, I have, I, I, I am hoping it will help more people to move into a post-doom mindset and experiment with different ways of living as a result. Um, okay, he will be launching the paperback on June 18th, and on July 10th, the book will become free as a uh, download. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, uh, that is the 50th anniversary of the publication of Small is Beautiful, by E.F. Schumacher. I now regard that classic text, Small is Beautiful, as offering a coherent analysis that the environmental movement and profession became better at ignoring as it became more compromised and self-serving. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, and you can pre-order the book. Uh, if you want to read his new book, he has a link to how you can pre-order it. Blah, blah, blah. So, guys, I don't know. Uh, I guess I will apologize to, uh, to uh, Jim Bendel for calling him a clueless moron in the same league with... Uh, Elon Musk and uh, Tucker Carlson, but I do think uh, that Jim Bendel should hire a copy editor and someone with a journalism degree to uh, make suggestions to his future essays to avoid people misunderstanding what he has to say. But with that, i got to wrap this up and pack up my gas-sucking truck and head to North Carolina, baby. My guys. Wilson Log, are you ready to head to North Carolina?